from the Citizens Bank Studio for uh, for today, still up in the Mississippi Delta and enjoying it up here this time of year. But I want to welcome you to the Ricky Matthews Show, where we celebrate the people who are making coastal Mississippi and Mississippi, for that matter, such a wonderful place to live, work, and play. But it is Friday on my show, so we're going to spend a couple of segments with uh, my friend Jeff Duncan from Noel.com and the Times-Picayune. And we'll have Dave Dennis, uh, the great uh, leader in coastal Mississippi, an entrepreneur, ran for governor a few years back, but has a good finger on the pulse of the coastal Mississippi economy. We'll have him in the second half of the show. Without any further ado, let's bring our friend Jeff Duncan in, who always has a way of sort of putting everything in perspective, no matter how tough the season has been for the Saints. How you doing, my friend? Ricky, I'm doing good, all things considered. I mean, three-game losing streak for the Saints, but uh, I'm okay. You know what's interesting? We're going to get to the mood and the dome and spotting the team 21 points and all this stuff. You know, it's you said this before. This this is true with a team that is inconsistent. It's true with a team that can't seem to put it all together. Watching the Saints come back from the 21-point deficit showed you that they have it in them. They just can't seem to put it together. Um, I guess when you're snake bit, you're snake big. But there's a lot. It's it's a lot more than just being snake bit, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you don't get down 21 nothing without a lot of bad football you know, happening that quickly, at least seven minutes, uh, a lot of things have to go wrong and they did for the saints, but I do think, uh, it meant something to see them not throw in the towel. Uh, you know, I know they're paid to do the job, but I've seen a lot of games, Ricky, where a team like that would just say, you know, what, it's not our day. We'll live to fight another day. And the saints to their credit didn't do that. And I think that speaks to the, the quality of the character of the players that they brought in here. I mean, they didn't get it done, but they also didn't embarrass themselves. And I think uh, that means something when you're looking at the big picture. If you're Mickey Loomis, which I'm sure he was evaluating how the team responded, uh, that's going to go a long way, I think, when he gets down to evaluating this team and Dennis Allen and his staff at the end of the year. Hey, you listen, my comment to uh, my family as we were watching the game, <clears throat> I said, the Saints want to win this game. In spite of the 21-point deficit at the beginning, they seemed like they were on a mission to actually win the game. I mean, I, I really believed at one point in the game they were going to win the game. I mean, it was – I loved what I saw in the team in that moment. Of course, the 21-point deficit <clears> – <throat> just take that away for a second – but it has a heart, man. If they could just have that for a full game, they've got they they've got some players. Yeah, no, I agree. I, there was a point where I felt like they they were going to win it, or or at least take the lead. Uh, I would say that, you know, I think if Detroit ever got behind, their offense is so you know explosive, and they showed that they could run the, on the Saints and pass it on them, that they might still put that thing away if they were given enough time. And I think that's, that can be a little misleading, Ricky, because what, what the Saints are falling into this pattern, I think I've talked with you before about it, is the, the pattern of falling behind and playing catch-up in the NFL. A lot of times it's fool's gold. Uh, you know, it looks like you're right there, but, the, you know, the, the other team is managing the score in the game. So they're surrendering yards underneath. They're going to give you – the check down to Camara for eight or nine yards. They're going to give you the Taysom Hill runs and they're trading yards for time. And then when you get down near the goal line, they're going to ratchet things up again, hopefully force you to take some more time and then kick a field goal. That's what's been happening a lot to the Saints. So it looks like they're right there, but the other team's kind of in control. Yeah, that's, that's, that's hard to hear, but I think you're right about that, Jeff. Listen, uh, my sister Mitzi and my brother-in-law, Mac, and um, my uh, niece, uh, Rachel, we were celebrating uh, her baptism, the baby's baptism at, at our at Sacred Heart in, in uh, D'Iberville. And it was, uh, you know, we had church and then afterwards they had the baptism and it's uh, noon. So I'm thinking I'm watching my watch and it was a beautiful time. Lots of family. Everybody was together. Beautiful moment. So when it was over, it was about uh, 12, 15 or something like that, or maybe 12, 20. And we went to go take a family picture. But as we were walking to take the family picture, uh, Mac and others had already gotten on their phone. And they said, you're not going to believe that Saints are down 14 to nothing already. And then by the time we fin finished the picture, someone kind of blurts out, 
21 to nothing. I'm like, oh my gosh, because I was really looking forward to this game. I felt like the Saints had a, you know, had an opportunity to win. But, you know, Kyle was pointing out that there were a lot of Detroit Lions fans at this game. And so, and you've made the observation, you made the observation last Friday, actually, that if, um, if the Saints don't play well at the beginning, they could lose the dome rapidly. And that's what you observed, isn't it? No, oh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I've seen that before, Ricky. And opposing coaches and players have even talked about that dynamic. I mean, they recognize it, especially someone like Dan Campbell, who's been here, has coached with the Saints. He knows the passion of Saints fans, and they understand that actually this home field advantage, this passionate fan base that the Saints have, can actually turn into a disadvantage. And they understand that when things are going bad, they can get that dome to turn on the home team and it becomes an advantage for the away team. And it can unnerve the Saints and the, and the Saints uh, players. So, uh, and that's exactly what happened. I mean, all of a sudden it got really ugly. And, and there's only, there's typically one home game a year that's like this. I mean, I saw the Bills uh, bring a ton of fans a couple of years ago. Uh, and it's a very similar dynamic where you have a Northern team their fans are looking for a game to go to on the schedule, uh, and they and they find a southern environment like New Orleans. It's much you know you escape the cold weather and you get to see your favorite team. And the Lions are on an epic run right now, I and mean, they're they're having one of the best seasons they've had in decades. So it all kind of fed into this equation where you had a ton of Lions fans there, and the Saints fell behind early, and the dome got really ugly really quickly. So we had some uh, we had some buzz coming from uh, from uh, Michael Thomas. You had some buzz coming from Alvin Kamara. I saw the interview with Chris Olave talking about you know they heard the booze, but man, it's just, it's unfortunate that certain players are standing standing out because they they have issues with what they're seeing. It's you know, I, I worried that that the coach is losing the locker room. You said that's not actually happening across the board. But what's your assessment of that? Yeah, look, I think the Mike Thomas stuff was unfortunate. I think it's got to be disappointing to Saints management, uh, the coaching staff. I mean, he's one of the more high-profile players on the team. He has a lot of influence in the locker room. And these things tend to happen with him when he's on the sideline, you know, what I mean, when he's not playing. Uh, it's happened in the past. He's, he's had to have his social media posts addressed by coaches and management in the past. They haven't been happy with some of the things he's done. So it's not like he didn't know the potential ramifications of what he was doing uh, because it's been an issue in the past. And I don't think there's anything good that comes from that. Uh, there was a lot of cryptic things that he said that I don't have any idea. I, don't, I can't get in Mike Thomas's head, but none of it helps uh, in the situation where the Saints have lost three in a row. All it does is tend to fan the flames of public discontent. And uh, that's probably why his social media account was uh, taken down and suspended. I'm sure that, that came as a directive from the club. Yeah. So, hey, what was the most cryptic thing he said? Because I, I, by, by the time I got cued into it, it had already been taken down. So I was getting other people's interpretations. I didn't see any screenshot of it. So what was the thing that concerned you the most? Well, it was hard to explain. I mean, it was just a lot of kind of vague references. There was no... Uh, you know, coherence to it, but uh, you can read into it a lot of different ways. And so that leaves fans to kind of jump to conclusions. I, I think just right off the bat, the first play of the game, he basically said, you know, A.T. Perry was wide open. And that's an, that's an uh, you know, basically he's saying that Derek Carr missed an open receiver. You can't do that to a teammate. I mean, Ricky, on every play in the NFL almost, pass play, you can find an open receiver that's not seen by the quarterback. I've seen Patrick Mahomes miss countless open receivers over the time. It happens, and it's happened a lot to Derek Carr. I don't think you can explain it away, but all that does is undermine confidence in your starting quarterback when it's coming from your your top receiver. Uh, so uh, I think, you know, that's why I, I'm sure there's some kind of internal discipline that's being, uh, you know, meted out to, to Mike Thomas. Uh, they were supposed to be handled in-house, but there's no question that it upset Saints management and coaching staff. Uh, at a time when the team needs to be coming together, you can't, you can't fracture the locker room like that. Well, then, and then you have Alan Kamara, who makes a, a franchise career uh, record of, uh, for rushing touchdowns Sunday. 
and then he had to do that within this, you know, this, this fear of the dome and the booze that were happening. It affected him, didn't it? Yeah, he talked about it uh, yesterday. We we talked with him, and he said it was a scene like he's never really seen before. Now I can say I've covered the team a lot longer than than Alvin's played here. He's played here mostly in good times, but there's been a lot of bad times before he got here that I've seen that dome like that. And what tends to happen is the fans that are frustrated are looking for a scapegoat. And right now, the lightning rod. As usual, is the quarterback, Derek Carr. But I've seen it happen in the past with Jason David and Fred Thomas, Aaron Brooks. Uh, it, it's happened where a player becomes the subject of the booze, and it's happened on Sunday with Derek. Yeah, I remember I remember all those times. Uh, we've, you know, those of us who followed the Saints all our lives, been good times and bad times. You know, more recently, more good times and bad times. But hopefully that, that it looks like we're headed in a different direction at the current time. So, Hey, when we come back, we'll continue the, our conversation with Jeff Duncan from NOLA.com and the Times Picayune, and we'll talk about the injury bug. It's, it's a big deal right now. We'll see you after this break. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show from uh, the Citizens Bank Studio uh, today from the Mississippi Delta, where I spend a lot of time this time of year. And I have my friend, the uh, the incomparable, the, the, the award-winning Jeff Duncan from NOLA.com and the Times Picayune. So Jeff, um, boy, man, we we were doing really well with injuries for a long stretch, and then suddenly, wow, it's not good, is it? No, that's the longest injury list we've had all season on Wednesday. Uh, man, there was like a dozen players, and the one that cropped up that kind of opened everybody's eyes was Taysom Hill. You know, Taysom's had this in the past where he, you see him during the game, he never shows any signs of like injury. And then he'll crop up on the injury report a few days later. It's happened before, but he's a tough, tough cookie. Uh, I expect him to play on Sunday. Now, the big question is who's going to be the quarterback? It's surprising to see Derek Carr, who's in the concussion protocol, practicing at full speed. I mean, it, it sounds like I know he wants to play, and it sounds like it's trending to him starting. Uh, if not, Jameis Winston would get the start. But that's very surprising considering he's had two concussions now and in a three-week span, a four-game span, uh, usually the injury history is taken into account by the neur- neurologists and the specialists. So that'll be a doctor's call. Uh, but, you know, I think there's a part of the organization, Ricky, that that is concerned because of what we've talked about with the fans and the lightning rod that has become Derek Carr as he's, as he's become sort of the, the subject of discontent from the fans that if they go with Jameis Winston and he were to win this game against Carolina, that all of a sudden they'd have a quarterback controversy on their hands. And I don't think they want any part of that as they try and, you know, make this playoff run. Well, if that, if that calculus though includes, unfortunately it does include whether they want to admit it or not, jeopardizing Derek Carr's health, it's man, it's just not good. And that's where the neurologists have to come in. Some, right. some, that's what the, that's what the protocol is all about. And you said this before that he might have got rattled, you know, a little bit the last time they he went in the concussion protocol, but he came back so quick. The fact that he's coming back again so quick, it may be that he's not having full concussions, but just a little bit of a, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a, again, rattles the word I'm 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 thinking of, you know, just got pushed, but he's not really registering on the concussion scale. Or they wouldn't be letting him play in back-to-back concussions. I mean, there's just no way they would let him play. It's very unusual. I mean, Tua Tagaloa had similar, uh, you know, repeated concussions, and he ended up missing the whole final six games of the season last year. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's unusual to, for him to be at this stage, I think, this far along. Uh, yeah. You know, I remember something that Roger Goodell said years ago when we were asking about player safety, and he said, look, we have to protect these players from themselves. They would, yeah. They'll run through a wall if we let them. And that's, I think, certainly what the doctor has to do in this instance. What worries me about that, too, and I'm sure you're thinking this as well, the reality that if he's going full speed and practice but then ultimately doesn't play, you've, you've you know, just by by the very nature of letting Derek play in, uh, in practice, you're not, you're not really preparing Jameis the way you need to prepare him. And, you know, yeah. he came into that game last week, and you, I'll let you comment about that, but one other point, he came into the game last week, and I remember three missed passes in a row. I mean, he just he didn't seem accurate at all, but what's your thought about this? Well, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, 
the first pass, I mean, should have been intercepted. It was a miracle. It was classic Jameis Winston, Ricky. I mean, the, the Jameis Winston experience, he throws a ball that is going to be intercepted on his very first pass, and it gets deflected by another lion out of his teammates' grasp right to Chris Olave for a 30-yard gain, gets the crowd going crazy. Uh, you just never know what you're going to get with Jameis. Uh, but, it, you know, he will – no, he'll be worked in, and he's going to get reps. So it's not like he's not going to be – they'll have – a plan in place for that. And he's, he's played a lot of football over the years. And this is the perfect team for the saints to rest Derek Carr. I mean, they're one and 10. Uh, they've fired their head coach. They're really anemic on offense. I mean, they could score 17 points, I think, and, and win this game. So uh, I think you get him ready, get him healthy for the stretch run when you're really going to need him. I I get it. Would be an interesting call. Again, I think the 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 NFL protocol on concussions will rule the day. So if he passes, he you know he passes, and they'll let him play. And I I'm as you point out, the the coaches are probably hoping that he can play because they don't want a quarterback controversy on their hands. That's that's for sure. I mean, they have evaluated. They see Derek Carr as the better quarterback. Right, and and I think you know they're paying him. $35 million a year to be the starting quarterback. And I think uh, anything else would undermine the confidence, not only of Carr, but the rest of the locker room. In yeah. his, So at this time, it's a very fragile state right now this team is in. Uh, they need to bolster confidence across the board. And I think getting a couple wins here, and they've got a great opportunity with Carolina and the Giants at home, um, they've got a chance to kind of get things going again after this three-game losing streak. Listen, uh, thinking of, of Taysom Hill, I, I saw a social media post from Christian McCaffrey recently. And uh, he was at home, and, you know, I mean, just you could see real he, – he's a very neat freak, and he had a you know, kind of nice house, and everything was really in his place. But what he was – he had his – had I think he had a towel on, and he was just showing the bruises from – the day before, I mean, how beat up he was. I mean, his arms had bruises. He had bruises on his legs, scratch marks. I mean, this guy was beat up. And and I and I thought about Taysom Hill immediately because during the game, you see, he's got blood on him. He's got he's got you know he's he's got red marks and whatever. Man, it is tough to do what Taysom does, man. The way he just bulls forward, the kind of power that's coming at him is undeniable. Yeah, look, I I think. We all tend to take him for granted, just what he's doing, how unprecedented it is. As a matter of fact, I plan to write something soon on that exact subject because uh, he's been the MVP of the team this season. There's absolutely no doubt about it. He's the one consistent weapon they have on offense. Even though Chris Olave has really come on lately, he had a little bit of a dip in performance there midseason. You've always been able to count on Taysom Hill and his ability to throw the ball, to catch the ball. Uh, we haven't seen anything like that in the NFL in the last few decades. Yeah, I wish we could see more of it. <laughs> I just think it would be, you know, you know, I would have. I, I know they decided this is not going to be the case, but it would have been great when Derek Carr went down, just put Taysom in at quarterback. I, how often do you hear that? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people are proposing that right now. And look, you can see why Sean Payton at one time thought he was the future starting quarterback. I remember him telling me. The, the, the heir apparent to Drew Brees is in the building. In the building, make, right. Yeah, you can make a strong argument that the Saints would be probably you know, as good or better off with him at the starting quarterback. The, co the concern you would have is, like with any running quarterback, how much wear and tear would that take? How healthy could he stay? Uh, we've seen across the league. I, I think our, our, my colleague Matt Paris has got a story coming out this week about the injuries quarterback position in the league. And 24 of the 32 teams – have had a, an injury to their starting quarterback this season. Wow. So it's hard I mean, it's to keep, a, keep quarterbacks healthy. It's a violent game, man. It's a violent game. Hey, listen, I want to make sure we cover this before we get done. There was a violent play when uh, Alvin Kamara was tackled out of bounds, and one of the chain gang guys got caught up in it. And I saw at the moment that his leg did what it did, that this was a very, very serious injury. And people have really paid attention to this, and you're, you've been really focused on it, haven't you? Yeah, you know, I, I tend to look at the, the entire game as like an event, and, and it goes beyond just the X's nose and the play on the field. And, you know, Nick Piazza is a member of the chain gang. He's, uh, you know, lives in Chalmette, lives in Harvey, Louisiana. He's the, the, the member of the, of the chain crew that got injured. 
And uh, we had a ton of people reach out to uh, us trying to find out his condition, his status. And the good news is he's going to be okay. He's going to have surgery tomorrow. Or he's going to have surgery on Friday, I should say. We're recording this Thursday uh, at Oshner Hospital in Kenner. And he's got some ligament damage and some cartilage damage. But, you know, he's looking at about a two-month recovery. But he's going to be okay. There was no arterial damage. And that's the concern when you dislocate a, a, a leg like that, you can tear an artery. And that's when it gets really serious. So that's why you saw the paramedics immediately rush across the field to get to him uh, to, to, you know, show that, that you could see that the, I think the game was delayed about 10, 15 minutes. Right, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. but he's OK. And I've got a column that's going to run on NOLA.com and the Times Picayune kind of updating his status. There's been an outpouring, as you can imagine, of support from across the country, NFL owners sending care packages, the officials have sent him care packages, Saints have sent him. I mean, it's it's been an interesting story, and I think people will enjoy reading it. Well, how does that work? Did the pay, Saints pay for his medical care? How does that work? NFL. He's NFL does. NFL, yeah, NFL employee. So it's yeah. all through the NFL. The Saints orthopedic surgeon, uh, Michael Hartman, is going to perform the, the procedure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and, and, you know, and he, he said those guys make $50 a game, Ricky. Wow. They do, it, they do it for the love of the game. And he said, as he said, he goes, look, there's no better seat in the house than what I got. But they know they have to have their head on a swivel. And he just was the unfortunate victim of, of this circumstance. He, he saw it coming, as you point tell, tell, yeah. He jumped? Tell, yeah, tell he him. tried to jump. He just mistimed his jump. And they're coming so fast. And he said he's had numerous close calls being down there. Uh, but this time it just was bad timing and caught his foot at the wrong place as he landed. And uh, something had to give. His physics are involved there. Hey, listen, good luck to you and your team. Uh, I really want to encourage people to sign up for the NOLA.com Saints newsletter. It comes out every morning. They've got an ins insider podcast they do now where the whole team comes together. I really encourage you to see that because they're, are they making all these different observations and they're, they're just having smart conversations uh, from uh, being in the know and having great sources. And uh, I don't think anybody even comes close to NOLA.com and the Times picking in their coverage of the Saints. Anyway, thank you, my friend. Yep. Thanks, Ricky. Kyle, I'll see you guys again next week. Take care. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Thank you, Jeff. This has been Jeff Duncan. Uh, when we come back, Dave Dennis is going to be joining me. We'll see you after this.